What's up, everybody? Welcome to day 239, Make It Songbringer! Uh, today I'm working on turning animations, so the player can, when he's at rest, and he's facing one direction, turns to another direction, he actually does an animation going through that to that other direction, so it looks really smooth. For example, if you're here and you start walking left, see that? A little animation, same thing there. It's a little thing. So uh, yeah, I'm liking it though. It does add a little bit of a pause, you know. But it's it's a nice polish element. It's it's more realistic. It feels good. Um, I'm wondering if I'll do it while he's moving, because right now, I, if you're if you're moving, you can just instantly turn direction. So that's not very accurate either. And then another thing too is when you're going from one direction to another, like especially when you're going here to here or like here to here. That's kind of a, needs a smoother element too. So just smooth things out here. These are little visual polish elements that will hopefully help the game look a lot better. And also, I'm going to test it out later on with the, you know, as I'm doing it with the Xbox controller, just to make sure that it still feels right. So yeah, let's keep on doing it. I'm working on these animations right here for just the turn. Uh, this one little animation for turning with the sheath sword. So there's one pixel that's off a little bit. You can see as he kind of swaps directions, it gets a little bit... You know, it needs a little more... First of all, it'd be, I think it'd be nice if these... Oops. These were one pixel more to the, yeah. Let's see that. <clears throat> Nug troll. All right on, cool man. Welcome to the stream then. Cool name man, Nug troll. What up, Pedro? Just working on some turning animations here so the player looks really good as he goes from one direction to another. So, I'm kind of debating on this first frame here whether it should be like that. Yeah, well, I guess that works. His, oh, his legs don't look right there, though. That's the problem with that. It just looks weird. So his legs need to be, uh, and then, uh, both these, both these legs are weird. Weird legs. Okay, so if this was, um, one pixel more like that, and then this one, I think, would be the opposite. And then this one, this one's just way off now. Yeah, that'll work for one frame. What up, Peta? Welcome to the stream, man. Yeah, glad you like the early streams too. I like them too, I like doing streams about this time. It's nice to, uh, it's nice for you guys. It's also nice for me. It's a good time. Here, so this frame is way off. What's up with that? He's here. He's there. Marza Power! Bella Zio! Pema! What's up, Pema? It's been a minute, man. I hope you've been good. So I'm dialing in the pixels. I got this animation drawn for him turning from one side to another. I'm just making it so the pixels are kind of uh, 
just lined up. Everything's perfectly lined up, so it looks really good in the game. But yeah, it's all it's working. So I got this code working so you can actually turn directions. This is pretty cool. I want to make sure it feels right though. So that's kind of the idea, right? You're you're at rest. You you want to switch from facing east to facing west. It does a nice little animation. So it feels good when you're stopped. The only thing though is when you're moving when you're in motion, you can instantly change directions. So that's that's maybe need some work. <laughs> what? No, no, don't worry. <laughs> don't auto ban yourself. So we got twenty six pixels. That's right in the middle of his hat now. Oh, wait, okay, so that frame is where it kind of messes up, breaks the, breaks it up. Autobahn? What up, Jonah? Okay, so this frame. This frame. Two pixels so this is gonna be like that doesn't look as smooth as I want it to be here but let's hope this works out yeah new buttons and you can walk diagonally <laughs> soil soil like um I think of mud vein this this like metal band when you say soiled. Ugh. So this does require that his idle animation is perfectly centered. So let's make sure the idle animation, idle sheath, you know, we're looking, at, we're looking for an idle sheath east. This one, we gotta make sure he's perfectly centered. He's not, okay. So we need to move one pixel to the, to the left, to the right. Let's try this out. <laughs> really? You never know, they might be. Microsoft's doing a lot of marketing with their with game engines these days. Even Coco's 2DX, they helped out Coco's 2DX to get it running on Windows Phone and stuff. Because it's in Microsoft's best interest. Right, rock idle sheath east. Yeah, and uh, a turn. Okay, let's see if this turn is all ready to go now. 26, that's great. This last frame. 26. Okay, let's check it out. Let's see if it works can hide these frames now. I don't need those. This is just this basic animation. All right. Let's render this. Hey, what up, MC? Where have I been? I've been here, man, making the game every day.
No. Is that smooth now? I'm not sure it is. See, he's switching. He's switching positions a little. Like, not that much anymore. Let's we'll see that. Um, see that in slow motion, though. All right. All right, cool, man. So you're going to make your own art? Good for you. Yeah, I have been streaming. Yep. Yeah, right, Pedro? It's looking good, right? It's a really cool thing. It's just a tiny little thing, right? Just one simple little animation, but it really adds a lot of realism. Okay, um, yeah. So we film that? Did we, wait, no, I didn't run it yet. Let's film this in, in, uh, with screenshots on so we can do a slow-mo. See, there's some, there's some bug. I don't know what it is, but sometimes it, it does multiple turns. I don't get that, but it, sometimes it's, it's buggy. Anyways, we should have a few frames in there to be able to check out. Six forty seven eight and nine. All right, man, fuel it up, dude. All right, so starting from resting here. All right, nothing's changed that much. But the shadow changes a lot with that one little. Okay, so the second frame, third frame, that's, you know, it's kind of weird, I guess, how his feet shift a little bit, but that could, that could be expected from this kind of animation. Yeah, this is good enough. This is pixel perfect enough for me. It's looking good. Ludima, hello. Welcome back to the stream. How you doing? Okay, good. I'm happy with that. This little animation's looking good. Let's do the next animation for um for with his sword. No, without. No, let's do uh. Next, let's do. Yeah without the sword at all. Yeah. So without the sword would be idle east. We want to make sure let's get rid of these frames you don't really need anymore. Um and we also want to give him another frame. Why don't I turn up the sensitivity on my mouse? Just because I'm used to it this way. Both, oh, did I miss that? Let me check it out. Well, I, I wanted to show his, um, I'm pretty sure, let's see, where was that? See, I wanted him to have pectoral muscles covering up that. We can try it though. Uh, Chain Revenge, no, I did not have a turning animation. This is, no, this is new. This is all new. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, right? One of those kind of challenges. Well, good for you, man. Good for you getting that done. So this is what it would look like. 
with some straps. I guess that kind of is cool. I like that. Yeah. Good call, Pedro. Good call. Nice touch. This might be cool too. Nope, don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like it. Good. Okay, let's render that one. <clears throat> Turning animations are really nice. Not every game does this, but I noticed that f the first time I ever actually noticed, consciously noticed, a turning animation was Super Metroid. I'm like, wow, the character actually turns. And and that's what got me to notice so many other quality elements they put into just the character from Super Metroid. So it's got me inspired to do this right now. All right, next up we got Idle Sword. No, which one am I looking for again? Idle East. Yeah, this one I'm going to... Spiffy this one up. I like it when he looks in two different directions. But also he needs to be centered. Yep, so this needs to go one pixel to the right. Oh yeah, and I think it's kind of cool if he looks in both directions. Oh, either way, that's what we would call it either one, interview or job application. I guess we would probably call it an interview. The application is more of just a piece of paper, you know? Yeah. Jib interview. <laughs> Marza. Man, and I love you, Marza. You're freaking awesome. Give it up for freaking Marza and Alex Pita. Some of the longest freaking people, longest supporters of Songbringer. You guys have been around for pretty much longer than anyone else. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This game wouldn't be the same without Marza and Alex Pita. And a bunch of other people too, but... I'm just particularly thanking them right now. All right, yeah. So this frame here, we want to cop. We well, got to zero copies and uh, reverse. Yeah, it's going to be March. March 2016. Alex is the biggest too? That's right. Alex Pita. Like I was saying, Alex Pita, Mars of Power. Thank you guys. Yeah. Hey, Mars, are you going to WWDC again this year? This next year? Uh, <laughs> you were here before the beginning of time. That's right. That's right. Just notice the hat also can move. So if you move, yeah, he moves one to the right there. This should be one. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, at least one to the right here. Yeah, yeah. 
about five months. Right on, cool. <laughs> yeah, you do, you do. So yeah, beta. Okay, so I did the, I did all the, a, a lot of planning last night. I looked at every single week of the next five months and decided what I'm going to do and all that time. So um, yeah, the beta version is actually going to be early or very late February. And then I'll be fixing bugs and prepping the marketing and launching the game all through March. Who knows? Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to be going to GDC. Not like I'm not getting a ticket to go to GDC, but um, I'm going to be going to the after parties because it's here in the same town um, that I'm at. So I'll be there if anyone else is going to GDC. It's when is GDC again? April? Or maybe it's, I think it's March. Maybe it's March. I don't know. All right. Uh, you get you guys can access the alpha right now. Uh, MC the all the info for that is uh, on songbringer.com slash pre-order. Details of that. Um, I guess I should tell more about the timing of all this. Like, uh, yeah, oh, it's got it. Yeah. So here's all the details on that, MC. If you do want to pre-order, you get your name in the credits on the main menu. And uh, $32, you can play the beta. $16 just gets you the game when it comes out. <laughs> probably, probably both. Buying an island? Yeah, probably just drinking booze, I guess. Right. Okay. And then all we need is a turn south now. We should just base it off of the uh, the other turn turn sheath. Save this one as turn south. And just touch up um, each one of these frames by deleting the sword. Uh, no, you can't pre-order on Steam. That's not how uh, Steam doesn't work that way. They the only thing you can do on Steam is you could do early access, but I'm not going to do that for this project. I, I think that early access is um it causes me to wonder if 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 I were to if I if I look at a game and it says early access, I'm going to go. Mm, it, it it depends on the type of game, especially if the game has story. I'm going to be pretty much like no, I'm going to wait till it comes out for real. So I'm never going to do early access for people with Songbrew. I'm just going to wait till the game's done and it's, you know, it's a complete game and then put it on Steam and then look, release free updates. Right, yeah. So if you only have Steam dollars or whatever, then yeah, you're going to have to wait till it actually comes out. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, WWDC is June. I was talking about GDC though. I think GDC is Something. Azenris, what's up, man? You never had an early access game? Mighty Ness, what's up, man? Right? Yeah, and then you forget about it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You forget about early access. If you, maybe you played the early access version, and then you kind of forget about it or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But there's some games that does totally work. Like, for example, Crawl. Crawl is an amazing game, but it's mostly sort of a multiplayer game. So it's like... You're not really missing anything by getting the early access version of Crawl, you know, because there's not really story. It's very, you know, the game's over in a half an hour or an hour. It's more multiplayer. But I'm also open to anybody's thoughts on early access. Please tell me your thoughts on early access. What's your opinion? Do you prefer early access or do you prefer not early access? Go. Go, go, go. What's up, Kofez? 
Yeah, you can pay with anything but Steam at this point. And like I said, that's that's not that's because Steam doesn't work that way. You can't pre-order games on Steam. It's going really good, man. Right, Teely? It works good for Darkest Dungeon. Depends on how early. Uh-huh. What's I haven't seen Darkest Dungeon. Which one's that? Right? Okay, good night, Marza. See you, man. There's a lot of game companies that start with the word red. This game was brilliant. Oh, does it all look like that? It's kind of cool. It does. It's like a comic book adventure. Those guys are always so scary with the big old beaks. Tripping me out. Yeah, exactly. This is definitely one of those kind of games where early access would work. I gotta keep my eye on this one. This looks great. Add to my wish list. Momir, what's up, Momir? Really? So why why do you regret that? What what is it that made you regret that situation? Interesting. So you have bought a couple early access games and you never played them again when they were released. Sorry about that, Marza. Sorry about the streak there. Okay, oh really? Yeah, Kofez, yep, I have. I may I've used Coco Studio Coco Studio X for a long, long time. Coco Studio before that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's that is a big that's another point, right? That people tend to judge the game based on whatever state it's in. So if it's in an early access state of flux, it's changing, it's growing, it's getting better, then yeah, people are going to judge it for how it is right then. Okay, I think this one's ready to go too. Yeah. Save this. And I got to hook it up. And the last animation we're going to need is the one with the sword, where, there, where is, the sword is out, ready, at the ready. Yes, I am a contributor. Yep, I've been a contributor for many, many years to Coco's 2DX. I contribute, you know, not often, but three or four times a year. And back in the day, I contributed a lot more. But I'm not, I'm not one of the primary developers of Coco Studio X or anything. I also have a thing called Rapid Game, which has now become pretty much obsolete, so never mind. Oh, what was that just that I had just opened? Um, Darkest Dungeon. Oh, okay. Right, you prefer a demo when the game is actually released. All right. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Oh, there was no game to test? Oh, okay. So it really wasn't much of a... It wasn't ready for that, basically. Hmm. Oh, wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Yes, yeah, it sounds to me like they just weren't ready. Premature. Yeah. What's up, Woogie? Chaos Engine demo on Amiga? Sweet.
Yeah, what, what, what was that? Weird. Very weird. Uh huh. I haven't, I haven't seen Chaos Engine, I don't think. Oh, did they, did they re release it on Steam? Is this it, or is this like a, just like the remake or something? Hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, uh, one game I did play I last night was um, Secrets of Grindea. Secrets of Grindea was really great. Solar Flare recommended that as kind of a thing to check out, especially for the buttons and stuff like that. And I totally see his point. Yeah, totally. Right? Because you're getting the story of the game and you don't, you don't want to go get the story twice. You don't want to be waiting for them to finish the story either. So, hmm. Okay, let's run this. Yeah. What's up, TM Game Dev? Okay, so. I wonder how to f I can fix this bug. I don't know what's going on, but sometimes he doesn't turn. Oh, maybe he's not actually. Oh! Oh yeah, oh, I think I might know what it is. Just I think I just had this revelation. I think it might be that it's the player is thinking that he moves. Yeah, I think it's this. So if the absolute value of the new player's position minus the last player's position, um Oh no, let's not do abs. This is an int. Fabs. Fabs F. Uh, is greater than one. Then turn. See if that works. It might work. I know, yeah, the window's really small because I'm doing. Yeah, let's actually turn that off. But no. No, I need to keep it for a second. It's really small because I'm I'm rendering screenshots every single frame so I can step through it really slowly later. So yeah, it's gonna be tiny for a second while I fix this little bug here. Uh, now it's not even working. Put it to a half pixel. Yeah, Amiga. I wish to, I wish we had an Amiga when I was a kid, but when I was a kid, all we had we had like a ta our first computer was a Tandy twenty six hundred. Is that right? Or Tandy two thousand or something like that. It was an old game. It was an old computer with a friggin' DOS interface. So my my first games were DOS games, but I had a friend who had an Amiga, and it was pretty cool. I was always kind of jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still not, it's not quite working. So at one point, I think this is necessary.
Maybe. <laughs> yeah, right? It's the Game Boy Advance version. Yeah, Kofez. Yeah, Coco Studio X is a pretty rad engine. Um, I did write a book about it. I mean, an online book. So if you haven't seen, you probably have discovered this already, but if you haven't, here's my take on kind of learning how to do Coco Studio X a little bit. If that, if that helps you, I don't know. Yeah, Days of Thunder. Yeah. So what's curious is I don't get this bug when I'm in a not full screen mode. I wonder why that is. Okay, cool, yeah, great, great. Glad you found that already. Yeah, see, now he's not even turning. Okay, let's... Uh, yeah. This one little bug's bugging me. Let's move this back to the old code. Or maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. This is kind of functionally equivalent. Let's. Let's put it down to something really small, like if it's greater than 0 0.1 or something. What were you asking about 3D? Uh, Momir, I'm doing turning animations. Oh, let me show you what I'm doing. Oh, we should finish. There we go. It's done. So the player before. If you were if you're facing one direction and you started going the other direction, it would just instantly start going that direction. But now he turns. See that? He has a nice little smooth turning animation. So yeah, it's just a little polishing visual element. But it does it does change the game a little bit about how it feels, right? If you're if you're running this way and all of a sudden you want to stop and move this direction it adds a slight pause so I do want to play with this with the controller with the Xbox controller and just make sure it still feels right because I can there's other ways to accomplish this without you know without doing it that way yeah right on Uh, nope, no, the shadows are not new. They've been there for all, for pretty much the whole game. Nice. Yeah. Oh, good point, Azneris. Right. That's it's more than just visual realism. It's actually physical realism because you know the character does have to stop, change the momentum and stuff like that. So that, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. It's float, absolute float. Yeah, basically TM. Um, but basically, there's abs, which is integer. Let me see if I can bring it up. Actually, let me just go to. The, I'll go to the definition so you can see. Uh, so yeah, there's fat f abs, which takes a float and returns a float. There's or f abs f, and then there's f abs, which is the double version. And then abs is purely integers. I don't know why it's not showing abs for that one, but let's just get it up. You know what I mean? You can look at all these online, c++.com. Abs, that's just the integer version. So yeah, there's a lot of these kind of versions of functions for C and C++ standard libraries. Wow. 
Yeah, Mighty Ness, I already did. I already did. Let me show you the difference. If I turn on high res, I'll take two screenshots really quick and show you the difference between the two. So yeah, pixel perfect shadows, that was a really, really great thing. Man, yeah, so you, you, the game renders to a frame buffer and then renders that up. So it can do pixel, everything is all pixel perfect. Uh, so this is what the game used to look like at high res. I'm gonna take a quick screenshot so you can see the difference. This is the high res version. Um, and I'll go back to not high res and take another screenshot and show you the show you the the subtle difference between the two. Let's go right here. It's about the same spot. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like it, right? Yeah, there's a lot of birds around us. There's trees, and some days, <laughs> some days they are really loud. All right, what's this one? This one is the this one is the high res version. Let's, uh, oh, these are both the same. Okay, cool. Let's paste that on top. Here we go. So. So you can see the difference quite clearly in the shadows. Here's the high res version, shadows don't look that great. Here's the low res version, shadows are pixel perfect. So there's an option too, you can switch you can switch back and forth between the two ver different versions if you really do prefer a different one. If you just set the high res option in your settings, you're good to go with, where's that at, high res? Oh, there it is, high res. Yeah. So and also and also that makes the game run a lot faster, which is great because it just basically never runs my fan on a you know on my I have a MacBook Pro, but it always runs the fan on any Unity game, you know, even a simple game like Kentucky Route Zero I was playing last night. It would just my fan is like so loud. But yeah, Song Ringer, the fan never turns on. It's a quite an efficient game. Uh, no, Kofez, if you're going to make a game that is able to run on web, you have to write your game in JavaScript. Yep. So that's, that's a big choice to make. If you you got to decide that before you start your project, you know. Am I going to write my game? Am I going to release my game for web? Because if you do, it has to be in JavaScript. <laughs> That's why it's not the default. What's what's that again? M scripting? I know Coco's 2DX has this. What is this again? Sorry. Maybe I'm maybe I don't understand the all the intricacies of how stuff does work these days. What is this? Yeah. There's actually no longer Coco's 2D JS. Coco's 2D JS is t is just Coco's 2DX with some JavaScript bindings. And so they've merged them in the latest Coco's 2DX. They merged Coco's 2D JS and X, which they always they never should have ever had them be separate. So it's it's good. Oh, it's a source to source compiler. Oh, it ports your C code to JavaScript. Oh. Oh, well, well, there you go. I guess you could write your game in C and just allow in script to, to port it for you as long as you trust that this works. Probably does. Ah. Uh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go, Kofez. Maybe you can. It's not bad? Wow. All right, man. Okay. 
All right, Boogie. Cheers, man. See ya. Okay, did that work pretty good, right? Yeah, it did. It looked good. It worked great. So the next animation will be doing um, the turning with the sword. Yeah, that's a big if. that's a big question there, big if. But I I feel like I've seen this Cocos 2D X and M scriptum thing. I know it's been mentioned. Yeah, so maybe you can use it. It does have in script and support. Okay, so wait, this is, here's the status. The current status is that most of the tests run, but there are a handful of visual glitches. But there you go. Coco Studio X does have in script and support. What the? Wow, we're awesome. Okay, next animation. We're gonna start with the sword, idle, east. And we wanna be able to move. So we'll use the turn sheath. Actually, either one of the turns will work. Even just the turn, turn south. Where'd they go? Okay, so let's save this as turn sword south. We use this as a template and this is the starting frame that we want to go for. And I wonder if, oh good, this is lined up. another frame so we can do Propagate frame one. Gotta hate it. <laughs> Propagate frame one. It's like one of the worst default things in Photoshop. Like which one am I supposed to? Oh, this one, right? Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. So I'm just pasting on these two layers on the end of this animation so I know how to line this up. This is like the start and the finish and we'll fill in the middle. There, now he's centered, good. Okay, so now we got these frames and I could turn this into some, you know, these four middle frames here and it's in a nice turn animation for another. We'll be right back. I'm just gonna get a drink of water.
All right, so first frame. Graphics tablet. This one's graphics tablet worthy. I'm thinking this sword. Oh wait, this one's duplicate. 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 His legs are going to come in together a little bit. Like, if you're standing like that, and you want to switch to the other side, I mean, it's not really, it's not really that much movement. Your feet change a little bit, but your your legs don't even change that much. But his legs do change a lot. And overall, wait, no, they don't. They only change a pixel. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, I guess his legs don't really need to move that much. 
I guess it's more of his torso. So this one, that's where his torso is. So that moves two pixels. Okay, so this frame, I want to have move his body. by about one pixel, sort of almost centered. In fact, it's probably just fine like that. Except for that. Maybe not that. Yeah, that's nice and clean. Clean enough. <laughs> clean enough. All right, um, and his head's going to come and not be so jutted out that direction. Right? It's going to look a little better. And his sword is going to start coming in front of his body a little bit. Yeah, I think about there is going to be good. Ah. Ah. Wow, man. Yeah, uh, I highly agree. Yeah, definitely. When you're starting a project, you got to make that choice between between making a game and making an engine, I think. You know, some people, I'm going to get, you know, some people totally disagree, but I guess it depends on your, your project, you know, what, you know, it depends on a lot of things, but. I guess it's kind of a matter of opinion, but I personally believe that it takes a lot of time to write an engine, unless you're just talking about a very simple 2D engine. Um, so I think if you want to write a game, it's better to start with somebody else's engine. Cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Am I swimming? I'm swimming. That's actually really nice, dude. I'm, that's cool to know that. Um, that you you started writing your own C++ game engine and you ported it with Inscripten and it worked that well. Thanks for sharing that. This might actually be the second frame. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I broke it. 
you broke, you blew it. This one, this one might be zero, I'm thinking. So if we move only, not quite as many pixels. That was four, so let's just move two. Hey, what's up, Elias Savine? Wolfski! What's up, Wolfski? Why are computers so expensive? It's because they're made of diamonds. They're made of diamonds and gold, man. Entirely. Entirely diamonds and gold. That's right. Whoa, dude. That's gorgeous. Props. Serious props, man. Yeah, way to go. <laughs> you got me. You got me. We get so many bots these days. Wait, why didn't it ban? Ban, ban, I clicked ban, ban again. Ban two more times. Oh, there we go, now it works. Okay, so let's get another frame and use the one. Boop, boop. Right, I'm thinking that might change a little, this one frame. Here. Might want the sword to actually be more vertical, but let's try it out. Right, it's still kind of a big jump from this frame to that frame. That's what I'm not liking so far. Oh no, seriously, feel free to promote what you're working on on this stream. Absolutely, share your links, share whatever you're creating. I would love to root for you. Yeah, nice, what do you sketch this time? Whoa, nice work, dude. Wolfski, you're a kick-ass artist. It's looking sweet. Is this for what, that project you've been working on for a while? The one where you shared that cool 3D animation? Yeah, I'm getting confused. Too many frames. Too many frames.
Awesome. Oh, right on. Sweet. Motion capture. Sweet, dude. Uh-huh. Yeah, characters. Awesome. Are you going for kind of a uh like a Dark Souls style uh sort of medieval characters? It's like all you really need is some animations and stuff. They're, they're not looking too bad, man. Yeah, Wolski. Oh, yo, nice, an update. Yeah, cool. Good job, Crash Lemon. I was I was totally wanting you to I was wanting to see this animation in particular. It's way to go, dude. So this is him like swinging his sword into a run. Nice. Yeah. So Crash Lemon shared the shared just one single frame. The other was it last week or something? Good job, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get this one. Frame three version. Mm hmm. Hmm. I don't know about this one. Need something else. Uh, he shifts his feet. Wait, what's this one? So he shifts from. There's where his front foot is. See, so he shifts the whole two pixels on his feet there. Oh, wait, let's make sure these are all lined up. <laughs> yes. Dude, you gotta love Amiga. Awesome. See you, Jonah. Later, man.
maybe starting at this frame, he'll move back a pixel here also, back a pixel, and then this one, back a pixel that way, here too. Shit! Stream's dying like crazy. Looks fine here. Sometimes it'll say reconnecting. Mm, okay, there's the last frame here. One pixel there. I think all it needs now is... This middle frame for the sword to not be so... Straight up for so angled, needs to be more straight. All right, so yeah, um, if anybody's watching this on YouTube, um, sorry about that, but it uh, looks like we're going to have to restart the stream. Something's up with Steam, stream, the stream, the Twitch stream. So anyways, I'm going to restart, uh, and yeah, that's going to be it for today's video on YouTube, but I will still be doing a stream. So see you all YouTube watchers later for now.